when you're thinking about what SOPs to create first, think about those things that you do consistently in your business. So I always have people do a time inventory first, and that's a week long of just writing down what you do, every single thing that you do in your business and how long it takes you. And usually those things that are recurring themes, that's an indication that that's an SOP that you want to tackle first, because even if you're still a solopreneur, that's probably one of the things that you want to offboard to a team member first as well. Oh, I really like this episode. It literally, I told her when we were done recording, I said, Tasha, I feel very overwhelmed and I feel like I have a lot of things to do. And that's because... (laughs) She's talking about standard operating procedures, and I've literally sat down once with my director of operations to create like three or four or maybe even five if I'm lucky, and that was a year and a half ago. So what Tasha is talking about in this episode, it is a must for me, and I know it's a must for a lot of people listening, and she will explain why. Um, But first... So you don't feel so overwhelmed and you can get some help with this. Head to TashaBooth.com slash Media Maven. Tasha is sharing a standard operating procedures template. I am going to link to it in the show notes. If you are driving or working out right now, it's at TashaBooth.com slash Media Maven. And she is going to help you document everything you do in your business in a way where if you started building a team, you can hand it off so easily. If something happens, if there's an emergency and you're sick and you can't do something, like your bases are covered. Do not make the mistake I did where you wait for years and years and years to do this. And then after you do it, you don't do it again. (laughs) I'm super excited to get into this template that she shares. And um, I hope you like this episode with Tasha. Ever wonder how some people seem to get a ton of media coverage and you don't? Welcome to Become a Media Maven, where TV reporter, host, and news contributor Christina Nicholson shares years of media experience to help you get the media attention you and your business deserve. And now, to help you master your media coverage, Christina Nicholson. Tasha, welcome to the Become a Media Maven podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I'm so excited to talk to you because... SOPs or standard operating procedures are key for anybody in business, whether they are a team of one or a team of 1000, correct? Yes, absolutely. (laughs) And I learned this, I think the hard way, (laughs) because I think, (laughs) I think when you're a team of one, you're just so used to doing things like you just do them. You don't think of like documenting how you do them. And I was slow to build a team. Um, So when I finally built a team. I kind of did it on the fly and I didn't have any standard operating procedures. And then I ended up with like a team of five or six. I still didn't have any standard operating procedures. And then I was like hating my business and I hated, (laughs) I hated managing the team and managing the clients and being the middleman. And then finally I brought on who was a project manager who is now my director of growth. And, or I'm sorry, my director of operations. And, um, and I was like, okay, I think now I need to create standard operating procedures because you're going to run my agency. You have to know how it's run. So we literally sat down together and created them. And this was legit almost five years into my business. And at that point I was so burnt out. I was so stressed. I was so like at my wits end that I was like, okay, if I had these five years ago, this would probably be a lot easier than it is today. Absolutely. And you know, your story is not unique in the fact that I talk to so many business owners who are in the exact same spot. They've had their business for a while, but if you've been doing it yourself, then it seems like, oh, I have got so much more on my plate or I have have other things that demand my attention. You know, the last thing you really want to be doing is documenting all these things. And the fact that most CEOs, most business owners, they're, they don't enjoy being in the weeds and really setting up your, your SOPs, your standard operating procedures 
really takes a lot of time and attention in being in the weeds. So it's a place that we don't enjoy. It's a thing that we don't enjoy doing and it takes a lot of time. So it, you know, it, it makes sense that most people aren't doing it. (laughs) And before we like really jump into it, because I remember years into my business, I was like SOP standard operating procedure. What does that even mean? So just break that down. Yeah. So an SOP is basically a written down process of the art or the act of doing one thing in your business. And it, a lot of times you have a number of SOPs that make up that one thing. So for example, how do you onboard a client, right? That is probably has multiple layers to it. So there's probably multiple SOPs for the actual art of onboarding a client, but it's the act of doing that one thing. So it's the written down process of that. And it makes everything so much easier. Like I can give you an example. When I brought in my director of operations, we sat down and we give all of our clients an update every Friday, like this is what we've done. So we created a video and we have a Google Doc and it's it's it kind of breaks down things that we keep track of all week, who we're pitching, who's interested, what the response is and what landed, like if we got any media hits. So we created a video and we said, okay, for every client, you are going to keep this document updated. And at the end of every week, we're going to send the client an update. And this is what the update looks like. And Mm -hmm. we created a video that explained that one time. So now whenever we have a new team member come on board, we don't have to do it again. We can just take that video and we can share it and be like, look, this is what we do every week to let the client know what we're doing and to send them an update at the end of every week. Like it's, you do, you you take the time to record something once and then you never have to do it again. But for some reason, why is it so hard for us to just document it and record it that once? Well, I think that when the one of the big reasons that it's hard for people to do that is because it feels like another thing on your list, right? And people make it, we sometimes make it bigger than it needs to be. So I love the fact that most of the SOPs that you're describing in your business were actually created by your right hand, your director of operations instead of by you. But what I also love is that you guys have the video piece. So that's usually what I tell people to do first because that feels like the easiest thing to do. So we're already going to be doing the process. All I'm asking people is to press that little Loom Chrome extension button or to hop on Zoom and share their screen and record it while they're already doing it, right? So then we have that first layer of the process documented. Then the person who's actually going to be performing the task can go in and create the actual written piece of it because that's that's the layer that whoever's going to be doing it inside and out every single day or every week, um, whichever it is, is going to need to, to understand and actually having them go in and further document the process and write down the actual steps will help them learn even better how to actually do it um, and will you know, in, enforce that or reinforce that learning process. So the business owner really only needs to be responsible for that first piece, the videoing piece, which is the easiest piece. And then they can actually hand it off to somebody. But I think it's so difficult because people think like we start to spiral out of control. We spiral down, right? We're thinking like, oh, I have to record it. And then I have to like write out the whole process. And then I have to like answer all these questions. No, you just have to record it. Just get to that part first and then have the other person worry about the rest of it. And if you write out the whole process, nobody is going to read that. Like (laughs) you wouldn't even want to read that (laughs) if somebody gave that to you. Something that I do now, I mean, obviously, like I said, when my director of operations came on board. I was like, let's create these. And I Mm -hmm. said, and I, at the time I didn't even know they were like standard operating procedures. I was like, okay, well, this is what I do. So I guess let's just take a video and say, this is what we do. And then, you know, we keep everything in Google drive that like people use Asana and Trello and Basecamp and all of that. I just keep it all in Google drive. Everybody has access to it. People are probably familiar with it. We actually even created a video on how to use Google Drive if you're not familiar with it. But besides that one day where we were like, oh, let's just take a few videos and talk about how we do this. Now, if there's something new and I'm just doing it, like by chance, like, oh, I'm going to do this today. Oh, well, why I do this? Why don't I just take a video of it? So it's not actually another thing on my list of things to do. As I'm doing it, I'm taking a video and maybe I'm just talking through it instead of like thinking through it through my head. 
Right. Absolutely. And that's exactly how it should go. That as your, you know, SOPs are a living, breathing document, they're going to, we're going to change things over time and find better and different ways to do things in our business. And that's totally fine. But you want to make sure that you are updating that so that it's not a case of, oh, I updated it two months ago and my team member still doing it, you know, the, the wrong way, quote unquote, because you haven't communicated the update to your team member. I love the fact that you're keeping it all in Google Drive. We actually um, have all of our SOPs in Google Drive, but then we link to basically one full page in Asana that that is, acts as kind of like the library, um, you know, the table of contents for everything so that people can go in on my team and see like, okay, these are all the SOPs around onboarding or around inbox management or whatever the case may be. And then they can click over to the actual link for the video and then for the written SOP in Google Drive. A lot of my listeners are solopreneurs or they're just freelancers who are side hustling while working a full-time job. And Mm -hmm. they probably think, like I did, I don't need to create an SOP because I'm doing this all anyway. So I don't need a video showing myself how I do this already. So why do you think it's important for those people? Yeah, I think that there's a couple reasons why it's super important. Number one, because eventually most of us think of a business that is bigger or beyond ourselves, right? So we want to make sure that when we're starting to document our processes, um, we're, we're thinking about like, not the fact that you're always going to be doing it yourself, but eventually you're going to need a team member to do it for you. Because I know that most business owners create their businesses for the freedom of being able to do other things and go places and, and spend more time with their kids and everything. So if you're constantly in the doing of your business, you number one, can't do that. You can't experience that freedom. And number two, you can't grow the business when you're all in the doing. So being able to eventually have somebody come on and support you is going to be super helpful. And just getting in the habit of documenting those processes sooner rather than later is going to make the whole onboarding and hiring piece of when you decide you want a team member so much easier. And then the other reason is, God forbid there's ever an emergency where you have to be out of your business, it's going to be so much easier to be able to hire somebody quickly and kind of on the fly not that I ever suggest, you know, hiring on the fly, but if you were to have an emergency where you have to be out of your business for any length of time, having those processes already documented is going to allow somebody to step in and say, okay, I know that I can't do it as great as she was doing it, but at least I've got a way to, to get started on the process and to help out in the interim. And even if you think you're not going to grow or you don't want to grow or you don't want a team, I mean, you use the emergency example. That's a perfect one. Mm -hmm. I also did not want to grow. I did not want a team. Like more people, more problems, more money, more (laughs) problems. Like that is true. But your goals change. Your business model is going to change. And you, I mean, you really need this. Even if you think you're not going to change, you might change. But especially for those that like, you might get sick for a week and you need your mom to get all up in Zoom or whatever it is. And she's going to need a video to learn what to do. So I think I think this is great. And like we said, you don't need to like schedule a day to do it all. Just take a video as you're doing it um, while you're doing it. Tasha, exactly. I want to I wanna get back to before we talk about the most common SOPs, like if people are wondering like, oh, what do I document? How do I decide? I want to get to that in a second. But before that, I want to hear about what you do in your team and how you have done this yourself because you have, in my opinion, a large team. I do. And and it was funny when you were saying like your your goals change and your desires change because if somebody had asked me like even a year ago, do you want a team of 20? I would have been like, heck no. No, Hell I don't no. want That's a team a of headache. 20. <laughs> that is yeah. a headache. But I now have a team of 20. <laughs> <laughs> so and that I, is why you I, don't have headaches. <laughs> exactly. 20 and growing. But the only reason that we could do that is because we spent all of last year Um, really all of 20, probably 2018 and 2019, but really 2019, digging into our SOPs and documenting basically every single process, both internally and also client facing. So how do we deliver all of our services to our clients? Oh my gosh, tell me everything. This sounds so good. (laughs) So when I hired my director of operations, Jay LaRae, um, I hired her in October of 2018. And I had this ridiculously long list of like, here's what we need to document. Here are all of our SOPs. Because 
as a virtual support firm or agency, we really spent so much time working on our clients' businesses that I had neglected a lot of our internal processes. So we didn't really have anything documented internally. And what that ended up, what ended up happening was everybody was doing it a different way, or I was re-recording things of like, oh, now we do it this way, right? All of the things that I don't want our clients to do, <laughs> we were basically doing at the Launch Guild. And so when Jay LaRae came on board, we really spent like the first year of her being there, really digging into what SOPs do we really, really need to document and making sure that they stay up to date. Um, so what we ended up doing is we start with the video, like you were saying, and then we have a, a written down template that the team member, whoever is going to be responsible for doing the SOP, they create the actual written down SOP um, with a date that it, where, where it's updated as well so that we know when the last time the SOP was updated. We can go back in every few months and look at, okay, do we have a different way of doing this now or is this still the same way we do this now? So that was really important internally to our business. Okay. And you keep track of everything you said. Asana yeah. is like the table of context, but it always links to a Google Drive. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Give us some examples. You said you do this with internally and with clients. Give us some examples of some SOPs that, that you have and that maybe other people should have. Yeah, so I definitely think that a lot of people usually need to start around onboarding um, and how they onboard their clients. So that goes for coaches, that goes for done-for-you service providers. Most of us have some sort of way that we onboard our clients, or even if you have students, if you have a, a course or something like that, it's really about what does that look like from lead all the way through the client relationship. And I will tell you straight off the bat, that is going to be a bear of an SOP. I, th I gave us, I think, like three weeks to complete it and it took us three months. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh, why? Because it's, I think our whole, our total onboarding process is probably 50, like 50 steps basically. Cause we have like, okay, we, we get the client and then we upgrade them from a lead to a client in, in Dubsado. And then, you know, we customize the contract, we send out the invoice. Like we've got all of those things, oh, but we also into every little no, detail. And, but that's the important part because when you don't get into every little detail in your SOP, that's when things start falling through the cracks. For example, we have a, an SOP around gifting and how we gift, like when we gift clients, when we give specific gifts to clients and everything. And me being able to hand that off and say like, okay, here's here's the process around it. Here are the URLs that, you know, or the, the stores that we use for these gifts and everything like that. That allows me not to have to worry about, oh, are they going to spend too much on this, like just because gift, you know, because I haven't given them a price range or, or those sorts of things. So the more you can document every piece of the process, the easier it's going to be to be able to hand it off to somebody else. That's amazing. Okay. <laughs> you seriously, this is not a good, this is not a good conversation for me because now I have a list of <laughs> SOPs to create with my <laughs> director of operations. Okay, uh, speaking on that, you actually have a standard operating procedures template um, yes. for listeners. Y'all can get that at tashabooth.com slash media maven. Um, I am not a listener. I'm the host and I'm going to go there and get it at <laughs> tashabooth.com slash media maven because like I said, when I started creating these, it was really on the fly. It was like, oh, thank God I have you to run my agency because I will go into a corner and rock back and forth if I have to do it myself anymore. And it was just kind of like, okay, will I do this? Will I do this? Will I do this? So here's five uh, great SOPs that people need and we're done. And I literally yeah. haven't created any since and it's been a year and a half. Yeah. So <laughs> tell me what's in this template. I haven't uh, gotten it yet, but I'm excited to get it. Yeah. So it's the exact template that we use internally and both for when we are creating SOPs for our clients. And what it does, it's it's got a video section. So if you already have a video, there's a place to embed the video, but then you can also break the process down step by step. So it's a great opportunity for whoever's going to be able, whoever's going to be owning that project to really be able to write down the process so that it's repeatable and you can give this SOP to anybody and they're able to complete it beginning to end. Okay, so I just signed up to get it, and now I'm going to join the Facebook group. Hey. Um, <laughs> like, I'm doing the whole thing right now. Do it all. <laughs> I am doing it all. What is the Launch Guild? That is your business. Tell us a little bit about that. 
Yes. So the Launch Guild is an online business management and course launch support agency. So we work primarily with established coaches and course creators on everything from operational and virtual support management all the way through podcast management and course launch management. Awesome. But these SOPs can work for anybody. Any business, any, any process, any business. Yes, that's awesome. Okay. Um, I'm just answering the questions to join the Facebook group. <laughs> I am in. I'm going to have the best SOPs ever after this, Tasha. Um, okay. <laughs> so you talked about um, the SOPs, the onboarding, because onboarding is important internally for the team. And I would assume also for the client, do you send the client anything? And that's probably part of your internal SOPs. But what do you send a client? Do you send them any sort of SOPs so they feel, because I feel like a lot of a lot of people when they outsource something or they hire an agency, they feel a little nervous within the first 30 days and they get buyer's remorse right away. And they want that kind of... Um, they want to be comforted and they want that confidence uh, given to them right away that they made the right decision. So are right. there any SOPs with your clients and what do those look like? So we we actually, as we're working with clients, we are on the background creating SOPs in their business okay. so that any process that we have created or, you know, streamlined for them, there's an SOP for that so that it, whether they work with us long term or whether we're just working with them on a short term basis, they can give that to their long term team if they have, you know, a different team or something like that, or they can manage it themselves if that's what they choose to do. But what I think is great, specifically even about the onboarding SOP, is there's places so that our clients know and understand what's going on in the process, right? So there's certain specific emails that we're sending at specific times or the fact that we send them a welcome, you know, welcome packet so that they know how to work with with us. We introduce the team. Those sorts of things are all written into the SOP so that our clients are feeling supported from day one. Okay. Awesome. I like the welcome packet. I don't do that. We literally, like we get a client and we just hit the ground running and we go, we like skip the welcome packet part. And I had a client once ask me, oh, am I going to get a welcome packet? And I'm like, I don't even know what that is. I don't know what I would send in it, but we already started, honey. So I I, know (laughs) this is the second time I've heard welcome packet. So maybe we should send a, what, what do you include in that? Yeah. So we include, we reiterate like our business hours, turnaround times, those sorts of things so that our clients know like how they can get in contact with us. Um, every, a lot of it is actually in our contract, but nobody ever reads their full contract. You know what? I was just thinking the same thing. I thought if I did a welcome packet, it would be the important stuff in the contract, but less legal jargon. Exactly. But you know what we just started including that people are loving, our clients are loving. So because most of our clients are with us for multiple different things, we have multiple people on our team working with them. So normally our clients have an online business manager, a virtual assistant, usually like either our Facebook ads manager is working with them or our copywriter or our social media manager, somebody else. So it usually ends up being a large team. And one of our clients brought to our attention the fact that like we get on our, our kickoff call and we introduce everybody, but then she's like, but I couldn't remember who everybody was Mm -hmm. or who I should be sending what to. So we actually created just in Canva, a, this is your team layout. And it's got a picture of the team member, their role and responsibility. And it's been so helpful because then they're able to put a face with a name and a role on repeat. So we've been putting that in their welcome packet too. And it's been such a game changer. It's such a little thing, but we didn't, we never thought about it. And when we started doing that, our clients were just so thankful. That makes so much sense. First of all, I love Canva. I swear I'm in Canva like every day. Yeah. And (laughs) second of all, that's a great idea because I also work with a remote team. Uh, We see each other because we have our Zoom calls, so we see each other, but our clients never really see us. Our main method of communication is email and sometimes phone, but it's mainly email, but it's still nice to put a face with a name. And we do the same thing, right? Like you have me, you have the director of operations, and you have your publicist. And sometimes our publicists, well, always our publicists are working together, but sometimes they team up on the same account. So one client will have multiple publicists, So look, here you are. You are adding to the list of things for me to do and the list of SOPs for me to create. (laughs) Um, Can you give me another example of an SOP? We talked about how to onboard clients. We talked about um, 
some things, you know, that could be included in those onboarding processes, like a welcome packet and what that could include. What's another uh, SOP that that uh, a lot of people, most of our listeners would need to create? Yeah. So social media, social media scheduling specifically. Mm, that's a good one. And also how to uh, like set up from templates, social media graphics, basically. Uh, hello, so, Canva again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Canva is like my best friend. I know. <laughs> uh, but any, like you really need to be creating SOPs around anything that you could offboard to a team member, even if you're just a solopreneur now, but eventually anything you can offboard to a team member. But social media is such a great example of this because even if you are still creating your own social media, having somebody else be responsible for scheduling it, is going to be a game changer, right? Think about how much time that takes that we could be doing something else that generates more revenue, like right away, like even picking up another coaching client or another client in general. If you had that time back from, you know, that you're that you're using to schedule all this social media. So that's another big one too. How do you customize the templates? What hashtags do you use? Those sorts of things should be included in that SOP. Yeah. And it's so hard. I feel like it's so hard to think of those details when you just do it every day. Right. Right. Exactly. But once again, it's really not up to you as a business owner to think about the details when you are actually just recording it, video recording it, all of those little details, even if you're not thinking about it, are going to be picked up in that recording. And then that's another easy way for that person to be able to learn the process. I love that. I'm going to, in the show notes, I'm going to link to Canva because we've talked about that a couple of times. You mentioned Loom to create the videos. I use ScreenFlow, um, which I guess is like Camtasia for Macs. So I'm going to link to that in the show notes. Um, I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything so people can start creating their SOPs. Um, And you said, so you've spent a lot of time last year creating SOPs with, um, with your hire and then your team of, of 20. Yes. That's amazing. I know. And so what I also love is, so we have an internal VA that works with, um, me and my director of operations primarily, but Jay Luray, who's the director of operations, um, she and Archie, who's the VA, they get together once a week now and have an SOP co-working day. And I just think that's the coolest thing. They only, I think they're usually online together for like an hour or two and they figure out, okay, what's the primary SOP that we need to get done? What questions do we have? And then they just co-work on it together for like the hour or two hours together once a week. And I think that that's phenomenal. (laughs) I feel like my director of operations would love creating more SOPs. And I'm not just saying this because apparently I need more, but I think she (laughs) would really, because you know why she loves organizing. Yes. And I feel like that's exactly what you're doing when you're creating an SOP. Yes, absolutely. You're absolutely. And any director of operations that loves their job loves organizing <laughs> because that's such a huge part of their job. So she would probably love the opportunity to create more for you. <laughs> How did you get into all of this? I was a blogger first and I kept seeing people who were looking for virtual assistants. Um, and as a blogger, I was just learning so many different skill sets that I was like, you know what, let me try my hand at this VA thing. And it quickly spiraled into something way bigger than I had ever imagined to the point of where I quit my full-time job. I was at about, I think five, five or six months into, um, my VA journey. I quit my full-time job And then that next year I decided, you know what, I want to take this the agency route because I don't want to be in the doing all the time. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's basically how it, how it started. And it snowballed, you know, from there in a very, very good way. Um, And pretty quickly we've been in business for about four years now and, and it's just keeps growing stronger. I love that. Can we switch gears and talk about your business model a little bit? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I just want to hear the business side of things. Okay. So four years, team of 20. Are these yes. all remote independent contractors? So Jay Luray is full-time and she is an employee. Everybody else is a remote and independent contractor. Jay Luray is also remote. She's in Texas. But everybody else is an independent contractor. We're actually on the cusp of switching that over and having more of our team be employee model um, and less of our team be contractors. Okay. Why? Because I think I'm finally at the point where I need – to 
have more ownership of people's time. Okay. <laughs> and what I mean by that is we were for a little bit, we were having the issue of we would hire a new VA and say, okay, we're going to start you off with five hours a week, but we know that this can, will will quickly like balloon. So do you have more capacity? And the answer would always be yes. And then we'd come back two weeks later and be like, mm-hmm. oh, we've got a new client for you. And then they'd be like, oh, I no longer have that time. I actually found, you know, a client. Yeah, of my that own makes or sense. That's the freelance yeah. life right there. Exactly. That makes sense. So I was tired of this vertical model, basically, of having a bunch of VAs who had five hours a week each. And I didn't, I don't feel like that, that is the way that we can really grow and grow well. Um, so I think that if we have, you know, employees where we, we started off with, okay, 20 hours a week, you know, it's, and it's going to be a gamble of, can we fill that 20 hours a week, but we can always fill it with something internally, even if we don't have a client for them right then and there. But I think being more proactive in terms of growing it that way is really going to be helpful for us. I love it. Okay. And then how are you getting your leads? Most of our leads come from referrals. Um, We've got a really great and huge referral network at this point. And also I love networking. So it's, it's one of the things that I am really invested in and have been invested in, in in my business from the beginning. I love live events, even though right now we can't go to live events, (laughs) Um, but I love live events. I love getting on the phone with people, having coffee chats. Those sorts of things have always been a part of my, my business model. And I think that putting a face with a name and really treating people as people and getting to know them as a person will help them keep you top of mind. Um, and that's been the the case for us. So that's been a really great way. And then Facebook groups still, um, I think that people discount those a lot and think that Facebook groups only work for brand new VAs, but I've had people hire us for multi five figure packages from a Facebook group. (laughs) Yeah. People don't know how to use Facebook groups correctly. Exactly. They, they don't, they, and, and they go directly to the sale instead of getting to know and network and treat people as people. (laughs) Right. They look at the Facebook group as, oh, I'm going to come in here to sell and make money. And it's like, no, no, you got, you're missing a couple of steps there. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Very cool. Props to you on the networking. That is like my least favorite thing to do. Like I, I like to just stay home and like, like right now we're recording this, like we're all supposed to stay home because of the coronavirus. And I'm like, I've been doing this for five years. This is easy (laughs) for me. (laughs) Like I am that person. I I don't like to do a whole lot of out and about. I used to, I don't know what happened. I used to be going to every event, speaking all over the place. And now I'm like, "Er, nope, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe I'm just so old with so many children that I've just decided. It requires a lot of energy too, though. It's, you know, it's a big thing, which, and last year I was like, just saying yes to every event. And this year I was like, I'm going to be a little bit more strategic. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Back to SOPs. I just like to talk to other business owners about, yeah, tell me more. I mean, SOPs, we're talking about behind the scenes. We're just talking about everything behind the scenes now. (laughs) Um, Okay. Back to standard operating procedures. Anything else that you want to add that I should have asked? Because you don't know what you don't know. And clearly I don't know a lot about this because I only have like a few SOPs and I need more. So tell me more. I feel like we covered the big, the big pieces. Like when you're thinking about what SOPs to create first, think about those things that you do consistently in your business. So I always have people do a time inventory first, and that's a week long of just writing down what you do, every single thing that you do in your business and how long it takes you. And usually those things that are recurring themes, that's an indication that that's an SOP that you want to tackle first, because even if you're still a solopreneur, that's probably one of the things that you want to offboard to a team member first as well. So look at those, take take a time inventory, look at those things that are repeated tasks that are coming up consistently, that are really the lifeblood of your business in terms of like getting it done um, and then create an SOP out of that. And honestly, creating that list, I did that and I didn't do it to create an SOP. I did it to decide what I was going to outsource and what I was going to do myself because I said, okay, I'm going to write down everything I do, what I don't like doing or what I'm not good at doing, I'm going to outsource. So that list will help you in a variety of ways, both with the same goal, giving somebody else something to do. So yeah, everybody should totally create that list for sure. And you should just in general time out how long these things take you to do because if you're charging people, you want to know how long it's taking you 
to do, you know, in addition to the value you're offering, you know, all of that is really good information. So you can kill a lot of birds with that one stone. Absolutely. Awesome. Tasha, you've been amazing. Um, I can't wait to check my email and get that SOP template at TashaBooth.com slash Media Maven. I'm really excited for that. Yay. Um, Where can people find out more about you? Absolutely. So um, my website is called thelaunchguild.com. And then I actually have two websites because I also have the coaching and course creation side of things. So you can also go to TashaBooth.com where you can learn all about that. I spent a ton of time on Instagram, like way too much time. (laughs) And that's at the Tasha Booth. Perfect. I will link to all of that in the show notes, Tasha. Thank you so much for organizing our businesses today. Absolutely. Thank you.